What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. Since I'm about Scream 6 in this video here again today, we're going to be going over some idea over on Reddit that I believe may have solved the opening scene down to a T in the sense that this is the best opening scene theory that I've seen about or from anyone who who thinks that Samara and Tony are somehow involved in the opening. I just wanted to share it here in the video and also touch on Gail Weathers' fate one last time before the movie comes out in March. So just to shout out Three File Chiz Booger over on Reddit, this is your theory that you left down in the comment section, going over how you see the opening between who you think is going to be involved in it, that being Samara Weaving's character and Tony Revolori, and how you think this all will play out in the opening of Scream 6. Now, I do want to say that in my last video talking about Tony River Lori, I touched on the fact that his shirt, more or less likely, has to do with the plot of the movie in, in one way or another. There's no way that he's just blatantly wearing that shirt and it has nothing to do with the plot of the movie in some way, shape, or form. He even has he even has movie posters behind him in his room. It looks like he's a fan of the Stab franchise. If you notate the fact that there's a Stab poster, it looks like hanging in the back of his room on the uh, brief moment we see of him in the trailer when he's answering a phone call, presumably from Ghostface. But just to jump into what 3 file Chizwooger says he thinks, will, or they, whoever you are, think will be the opening of Scream 6. They say that Scream 6 opens with Samara waiting for her Tinder date when she receives a call. Turns out she matched with Tony and then realizes she was catfished by him. Samara proceeds to dump the phone or dump him on the spot and that's when things go awry for her. Samara starts to receive calls from Ghostface taunting her active sex life and Ghostface blackmailing her about sleeping with one of her students. Ghostface taunts Samara with unsolicited pics of herself and a male student and Ghostface ends up sending a pic of her and Tony inside the restaurant indicating that someone was watching. The mind games eventually lead her to a New York alley. Samara receives a Helen Shivers type chase from Ghostface which ends with her being brutally murdered. The opening twist is that she is butchered by a Ghostface who wears a new style mask and as an audience we see Ghostface unmask himself. This would be a very first time ever. They go on to say that Tony will be revealed to be the one who kills her in the opening and he's a copycat killer. He's just some incel who cannot handle rejection from women and he also happens to be a stab franchise addict as an audience we're led to believe that there is at least one more killer because Tony could not have taken that picture of himself and Samara that was sent to her before she is killed. Right then, the movie slowly transitions the focus to Tony, who eventually makes his way back to his apartment where Sam, Tara, and company also reside. So they're going off and saying that they think that where Tony dies in the opening is also where our core four Woodsboro people live. Tony will receive a call from the real Ghostface wearing the aged mask where he'll meet his demise and is brutalized by Ghostface in his bedroom. Now... The real killer's target, according to this, this user's theory, the real killer's target in the opening scene is Tony, who happens to have access to the entire apartment complex. complex. By killing Tony, Ghostface is, Ghostface is able to enter the complex and attack our survivors later in the movie during the latter scene where Mindy will discover Tony's dead body in his bathtub. Now, I will say this. I like the way they have mapped this out. It lines up with some of the other things we have been told. Apparently, viewer and on, if you don't want to have any other spoilers or anything that I would say is comparable to knowing that the grass is green or that you need oxygen to live. Viewer Anon has gone out and stated that the opening of this movie apparently will open in a restaurant. So they incorporated all of that into this theory. They incorporated that. They incorporated the Tinder date aspect. They incorporated the assumptions about Tony and Samara appearing to be in the same situation given the trailer that meeting people have watched and now think that this means that these two are going to be involved in the opening. So the, the fact that they think that he is going to be a ghost face copycat seems to be coming from also a snippet of that teaser where we can see somebody who is wandering through the costumed individuals wearing a backpack. Is this Tony with a backpack on and he has a costume in his backpack because he just got done killing Samara Weaving? It seems as though they, this person just wolved in so many different things that are out there and they came up with the most logical theory that I've seen so far. So you guys can let me know what you think about that theory down in the comment section below. Do you like that theory? Do you not like that theory? What do you think about that for an opening sequence? Again, let me know down in the comment section below. Would you prefer to see something completely different? Do you think this sounds unique and fresh or do you just think 
think again that we should have something completely different because I like the way they have mapped out everything that we know and came up with this in what is I would say the most logical rational opening sequence prediction I have seen so far and again shout out to you three foul chisburger if you happen to watch this video uh just to touch on the topic of gail weathers gail weathers and her fate a lot of people seem to think that gail weathers is going to bite the dust in scream six i am someone who i really do not care if she a lives or dies i am someone who wants to stop finding so much value in that and start finding value and inflating the value and helping other people see value and how are these characters used prior to their fate because is it going to be a Lindsay Wallace scenario? Because if so, Lindsay lived in Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, but the usage of her and her return, while it was nice to see Kyle Richards back, it was a completely unnecessary addition in the sense it did nothing, I would say, for the overall arc and ends for any other character. Her... Her background and anything she's been through since 78 was kind of glazed over. So if you're treating the character of Gail Weathers like that prior to her living or dying, and let's say she ends up living, I don't care if she lives, you utilized her terribly. Now, if you use her in some of the best ways possible, meaning she's heavily involved with trying to figure out who Ghostface is, you have a motive that might be tied to something Gail has done. And Courtney Cox is just getting to fire on all cylinders and fill in for the legacy cast in the best way possible, given that she is the only legacy member in this movie. If you utilize her in that way and make her something that is integral to the overall narrative and use her in a way to push the narrative forward, and there might be aspects of her and her role in the movie that relate to plot devices that can be useful later as it pertains to anything with the killers. If you utilize her in that manner or even utilize her in ways that push the arcs of side characters or main characters like Sam and Tara, Mindy, Chad, or the newcomers, maybe it impacts their lives. If you use Gail like that and she just happens to die, I'm not going to complain at all whatsoever. If you execute it in a way in which her death could have been done better, I can tell you that. But if you were to utilize her in some of the best ways possible and then she just happens to unfortunately die i'm not gonna i'm not gonna write off all the fantastic ways you used her leading up to that death uh that's just my two cents i think honestly personally that gail weathers is going to bite it and i say that because something tells me they want to try to uh outdo what they did in screen five but maybe the safest bet would it be just let her live you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you have already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications you can never miss a video in the description i have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video